Wonder what it's like to fast forward to the future? A future where the heart of the world connects old global trade routes with new global cities. Where we fuel innovation to generate tomorrow's energy. Where we disrupt old sectors to grow new ones. All while unleashing the potential of untapped opportunities. Where reform is the norm. And where doing business gets easier and better by the day. Even by the hour. Where the young are empowered to compete like never before. And where Saudi Arabia is open to the world and for the world. We don't just look forward to the future. We're seizing it. Future Forward. Invest Saudi. Kingdom is transforming under Saudi Vision 2030 and Nidlib, the National Industrial Development and Logistics Program. The program is revolutionizing the four sectors at the heart of the Saudi economy, mining, industry, logistics and energy, to build a future that works for people in the kingdom and investors around the world. We're building a new Saudi Arabia, and we can't wait to show you what it looks like. Nidlib, integrating towards a prosperous future. Assalamu alaikum. It's a great pleasure for me to participate in such an important international gathering for mining. Saudi Arabia has been always the land of opportunities. Today, with Vision 2030, these opportunities become more accessible to the local and international partners. National Industry Development and Logistic Program is one of the Vision 2030 programs that focus on four main sectors, energy, industry, mining, and logistics, where these four sectors integrate together to create values to the kingdom and to the international community. The program was built with an investor-centric approach to give more value to the investors. The availability of resources, the infrastructure readiness, the policies, the procedures streamline the processes and also the access to the local and international markets. All these were the core of the program initiatives. Mining is a great example of that. The investment law for mining that has been approved, the processes and uh, procedures for licensing that has been streamlined and digitized. Also the data that will be collected and packaged for the uh, investors. These are just the start of a journey in the mining strategy in the kingdom. I look forward for this uh, event to hear and listen and learn from all the international participants to improve and develop our mining sectors. Thank you. With Nidlib, the National Industrial Development and Logistics Programme, the Kingdom isn't just becoming home to some of the most compelling mining opportunities, a pioneering giant of industry, a logistics leader, and a champion for alternative and renewable energy. Enabled by technology and unprecedented government support, the Kingdom is also becoming an investor's paradise. The programme is revolutionising these four key sectors, strengthening the beating heart of the Middle East and North Africa, connecting Asia, Europe and Africa, and effectively making Saudi Arabia an unparalleled investment hotspot in the region. But how? The Saudi government is implementing initiatives that are making major changes to the way the kingdom works. We're boosting the Saudi Industrial Development Fund. 
we're establishing new special economic zones in Jazan, Ras Al Khair, and King Salman Energy Park to support export-oriented manufacturing. We're enabling a comprehensive ecosystem to increase the local industry's competitiveness. We're implementing new incentives and a comprehensive set of enablers to establish an investor-focused ecosystem that will ensure the competitiveness of domestic manufacturing. And that's just the beginning. From mining and industry to logistics and energy, We are connecting the key sectors to create a strengthened kingdom for the Saudi people and international investors alike. The kingdom is developing full mining value chains to capture the greatest possible value, helping to reach 1.3 trillion US dollars worth of untapped minerals. And with the kingdom undergoing the largest geological survey program of its kind, covering over 700,000 square miles and collecting more than 300,000 samples, the possibilities ahead for the mining sector are unprecedented. The industrial sector is set to grow exponentially by implementing a specially crafted growth model based on a tighter partnership with the private sector, with the aim of providing numerous investment opportunities worth more than 300 billion US dollars. The Kingdom is creating new industries along with new programs and initiatives to increase competitiveness. 800 million US dollars will be invested to transform Saudi factories to become model factories as part of our Industry 4.0 revolution. The logistics sector is being revitalized with groundbreaking initiatives at all levels, generating a total investment value of over 35 billion US dollars by 2030 and enabling more than 309 billion US dollars of export and re-export by 2030 by building a highly efficient export platform for industries. In fact, we turn the kingdom into a global beacon for exports, reducing the need for documentation by 80% and the time exports take by 70%. And the results are already clear to see, with Nidlib already responsible for the development of dozens of main and subsidiary roads, streamlined import and export procedures, and the implementation of automated electronic processing systems. And when it comes to the energy sector, the program is allowing us to increase gas production capacity to 18 billion standard cubic feet per day, strengthening distribution networks to support industrial growth and boost electricity generation. And we're powering the kingdom with over 200 gigawatts of PV solar manufacturing capacity moving forward an unprecedented level for our country. But how are these new initiatives driving transformational change in the kingdom? We're building value chains across sectors, across the kingdom and across the world, linking solar power to polysilicon manufacturing and then to quartz and silica raw materials, and then onwards by rail, road and ship. Even connecting a mining operation for titanium with a windmill that supplies power to allow for the manufacturing of an aeroplane which will carry cargo out of the kingdom and linking the production of electrical vehicles with aluminium, copper and rare earth metals sourced in Saudi Arabia onwards across the various logistics channels through the kingdom and then to bolster the renewable sector. Everything in the kingdom is connected under Nidlib. Together, under the guidance of Vision 2030, we're taking the first steps on a journey towards a bold, bright future for the kingdom, the region, and investors not just in Saudi Arabia, but around the world. Welcome to the future of Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from Saudi Arabia and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you the critical importance Saudi Arabia places on sustainability of our growing mining sector. The kingdom has great expectations for mining development as outlined under our comprehensive mining strategy and the National Industrial Development and Logistics Program NIDLIB. We aim to transform the Saudi mining industry into a third pillar of our industrial sector 
alongside the well-established petroleum and petrochemical industries. What is of our most importance, however, is the sustainability itself. Is one of our key, one of the key aspects to the strategy. Mining must become a sustainable resource for the national economy, but also ensure environmental protection, local community benefit, and responsible mining operation that prioritize health and safety. In 2019, the Kingdom's leadership launched the Mining Sector Sustainability Assurance Initiative, which aims to create a sector that focuses on balancing economic value and environmental protection. This initiative has three main objectives. Firstly, to focus on robust fiscal growth, promote energy efficiency to maximize yield and reduce subsidies cost. Secondly, to enforce environmental protection for local communities, but also to ensure local participation in the wealth creation from mining activities through employment in the sector and local supplier development. And finally, minimize the risk through stringent health and safety requirements for mining operations. A key deliverable, the Sustainability Assurance Initiative, was to draft legislation that would focus on regulations for mine closer, environmental regulation, occupational health and safety, and guidelines for community engagement. As part of our process in drafting comprehensive, detailed, and protective legislation, we began by collaborating with all relevant departments, stakeholders, example, the Environmental Ministry and the Ministry of Human Resources and Community Development and the Ministry of Interior. We have visited with local communities to hear their opinions and observations on mining operations near them. We also communicated our plans to established mining investors to ensure that our, our upcoming legislation would be beneficial to both current and future mining operators. The work has resulted in the new mining investment law, benchmarked against global legislations and coming into effect in January 2021. The law places sustainability and sustainable practices as foremost priority for new mining operators as they apply for licenses. We are confident that through this creation of top tier regulatory environmental environment, we will be able to ensure the sustainability of the Kingdom's mining sector. Requirements to apply for mining licenses include comprehensive mine closure plans to ensure community continuity and environmental protection during and after facility decommissioning. Mining operators must also provide business plans that specifically feature how communities near a mining site will benefit because social development is a key to economically sustainable sector. We have already seen the benefits that a well-run mining operation can have in rural areas. The recent establishment of mining cities such as Wadi Shamal in the Kingdom's north regions have shown how lives can be transformed for better. Wadi Shamal alone has created significant amount of jobs and the massive phosphate hub has become a city in its own right. But of course, we cannot speak about sustainability without emphasizing the importance of environmental protection. The new mining law requires environmental assessment for mining licenses, as well are all aware of importance of preserving local wildlife, but even more importantly, our limited water resources. The need to focus on greener, cleaner technology is in developing the mining sector is very vital. We believe new technology is the key 
to further reduction of environmental impacts. But how we will promote such sustainable practices in the future? I believe the best way is through further streamlining of administrative processes and through the creation of an entity that can act as a champion for sustainability. It is with this goal in mind that we are planning to establish a sustainability council by bringing together all the relevant stakeholders from a ministry level downwards the council will assist in monitoring and enforcing sustainable practices across multiple sectors including mining of course the sustainability council will monitor an industry's level of sustainability and assist in responding to challenges that may be preventing sector from achieving its sustainable development goals. As a champion for cleaner technology, I believe that the Council could also assist in helping us achieve optimal use of water resources in mining industry as we move closer and closer to waterless operations in the future. The Council will also be responsible for reviewing regulations and guidelines and, if the need arises, help to develop them further to ensure that the Kingdom's stance on sustainability and environmental protection clear across industry. The Kingdom desire to help develop sustainability guidelines across borders has culminated in our recent decision to join the Intergovernmental Forum on Mining, Minerals, Metals and Sustainable Development. The IGF supports more than 75 nations globally and is committed to leveraging mining toward sustainable development and limiting negative impacts from sector. We have already learned so much since we joined the Forum in 2018 and it has provided the Kingdom with many learning opportunities as well as opportunities to help develop mining policy, frameworks and global dialogue on sustainability. As we continue to develop our knowledge and refine our vision for Saudi mining sector, we hope that the rest of the world recognize our commitment to the environment, our people and the growth of the global mining industry. Thank you very much for giving me the time and I wish you a very beneficial time in your conference. Since 1935, when the late King Abdulaziz opened the first mine in Saudi Arabia, mining has been one of the cornerstones of the kingdom's story. Today, under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, the sector is going through unprecedented development. Under Vision 2030, spearheaded by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, and under one of its biggest core programs, the National Industrial Development and Logistics Program, our resource-rich mining sector was re-energized as a potential third pillar of Saudi industrial growth. تريليون و300 مليار دولار حجم قيمة المعادن اللي موجودة في المملكة العربية السعودية هذه يحتاج استثمار ضخم جدا For this purpose, the comprehensive strategy for mining and metallurgical industries was developed including more than 40 development initiatives A key initiative is the new mining investment law Today we are proud to introduce the Kingdom's groundbreaking new mining investment law unleashing great mining opportunities and contributing to the diversification of the Saudi economy and the development of national industry, ushering in a vibrant new era that will see job creation, development opportunities and much more on a scale never before imagined. And for local and international investors alike, the new mining investment law introduces equality, flexibility, transparency, trust, security and safety. Accompanying the new mining investment law, we have launched a streamlined, completely digitized and easily accessible licensing and administrative system. 
as well as a comprehensive and up-to-date national geological and geoscience database. Our well-developed infrastructure, competitive energy costs, educated workforce and strategic location mean that the Kingdom is undoubtedly one of the most competitive investment opportunities in the world of mining. The new mining law will support the long-term sustainability of the Kingdom's mining sector, strengthen environment, health and safety regulations to ensure sustainable development and contribute immensely to the building of community programmes that will increase recruitment and procurement from local communities. With these promising opportunities, our commitment to protecting the environment and applying the highest standards of environmental control remains stronger than ever. With confident strides, the new mining investment law opens the door to building a world-class mining sector in the Kingdom based on strategic partnerships and aiming to be a major pillar of the national economy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank you on behalf of Saudi Geological Survey for giving me the opportunity to introduce the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in defining the mining sector and Saudi initiatives and the Fijian addressing the mineral resources strategy. Under the Fijian 2030, the Kingdom has taken steps to promote and prioritize the mining sector so that domestic and international investors could explore our mineral resources in confidence an important step toward achieving our goal. Geological survey in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia began in 1965 until the Saudi Geological Survey took over this task officially in 1999. The SGS has been responsible for carrying out research on the various aspects of air science in the Kingdom, especially in mineral exploration. It's also encouraged and promote investment opportunity in the field of mining, and therefore, to benefit from the resources, the government will provide optimal support to facilitate the sector for its growth and success. We at SGS have a mission, and that is to provide relevant scientific information and advice to the government and stakeholders by securing adequate mineral and water resources of the nation, to protect the kingdom, national environment, and to mitigate the detrimental impact of national hazard to safeguard our people. The vision of SGS is very clear, and that is to serve the nation by creating the ideal national and economic environment and to harness technologies and available incentive to enhance our capabilities and improve the standard of living of our people. Now let's look at the key objective of the Saudi Geological Survey. First, to provide geoscientific advice and consultation to the government and private sector, including geological information in the shape of map and other required format. Second, to promote sustainable development and utilize of Saudi Arabia mineral resources. Third, to build and develop national geoscience database. We have a number of centers and departments at SGS, and they provide a variety of services and support facilities, including Systematic geological mapping at various scale, systematic mineral exploration, water exploration, modeling and testing, environmental study, geohazard study, technical support in the form of laboratory services, logistic services, field support, and consultation services. We have a number of ongoing projects in the pipeline. For example, the metallogenic map project of the Saudi Arabia and the Borfri Kabar project at the eastern part of the Arabian Shield and the Rare Earth project in the alkaline rocks in the Arabian Shield. Most recently, we have launched an initiative program under the Saudi Fijian 2030. And these are the Regional Geoscience Program, the RGB, Accelerating Exploration Program, National Geoscience Database, Mining Center of Excellency, National Drilling Core Library, Monitoring the Geohazard, and the exploration and evaluation of geothermal resources. The RGB is one of the largest initiatives related to the mining sector and hold the key of the industrial mining development strategy of Saudi Arabia. 
three projects are under this category, namely the airborne geophysical survey, geochemical survey, and geological mapping. The main objective is to maximize the value by utilizing the mining sector by obtaining necessary high quality geological survey data to support mineral exploration and to attract investors, mostly international. And the vision is to attract junior and major companies to invest in mining sector related to the Arabian Shield. We know that the required high quality geological data is likely to be valid for several decades. So in short, we will be fully supporting mineral exploration using essential and relevant geological data. Second, promoting the understanding of our deposit in the kingdom. Third, identifying, exploring, and examining a new mineral prospect for mineral exploration program. And fourth, attracting investment in the mining sector. We also have the Accelerating Exploration Initiative. And the objective is to boost the exploration in the kingdom by establishing an exploration entity that will forge partnership with local and international exploration companies and to conduce own exploration activities to advance priority prospect to, to make them more attractive to investors. And then we have the NGD initiative. And the objective first to lay the foundation for establishing a secure national geological repository, which is easily discoverable and accessible to the public through the internet. Second, to consolidate, standardize, and deliver accurate, timely, and relevant data to NGD partners, stockholders, and clients. Third, to drive international investment to the abundant resources present in the kingdom. And fourth, to simplify the procedure for the potential and current investors in the mining field by offering a wide range of services, information and data set. I will take the liberty to confirm that we have awarded contracts to the following. Geochemical survey contract to China Geological Survey for six years. Airborne Geological Survey Block 1 contract with Sander Company for three years. Block 2 and Block 3 contract to Excalibur Company for three years and the technical partner contract to IGS company. On behalf of SGS, I would also like to encourage the foreign investors to get involved in the prospecting processes and play a role in executing these projects jointly with SGS. You can contact SGS for further information and thank you for your interest. An ambitious vision for the future, realized through groundbreaking programs comprehensive strategies, and giant projects. The Regional Geological Survey Program is one of the most ambitious of them all. Led by the Saudi Geological Survey, in collaboration with world-class partners, nearly 500 Saudi geologists and scientists enrich their knowledge of 600,000 square kilometers of mineral-rich Arabian Shield. Through the Advanced Airborne Geophysical Survey, the Multi-Element Geochemical Survey, and detailed geological mapping. Capturing high-quality and reliable geoscience survey data that will support mineral exploration and highlight promising investment opportunities. Six years, 110,000 rock samples, cutting-edge technologies. The mining sector is set to be the third pillar of the kingdom's industry and the Regional Geological Survey Program is going to help turn this goal into a reality. Hello ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be part of the IMARC this year. I am al Walid al Awaji, working at the Saudi Industrial Development Fund. SIDF has been supporting the Saudi manufacturing industry for the past 46 years. We offer medium and long-term financial loans, advisory solutions, and human capital development of the entire industrial ecosystem. Today, SIDF is the main financial enabler of NIDLIB, which is one of the largest programs for Vision 2030, aiming to attract investment and transform the kingdom into a leading industrial powerhouse and a global logistical hub. And as a financial enabler 
of the industrial transformation in the kingdom, SIDF has raised its capital to $28 billion in 2019 and has expanded its bylaws to support a number of promising sectors, including mining. Saudi Arabia holds exciting potential and opportunities for investors located at the heart of the Arab world. The kingdom has geographical advantage of being a connector between Asia, Africa, and Europe, with major ports of each side of the country. The kingdom is building a highly interconnected ecosystem, backed by a robust logistical infrastructure and a bountiful natural resources. Saudi is already deriving value from mining as the sector offers tremendous potential for a bright future that is aligned and singled out in Vision 2030 as a key driver of economic diversification and growth. Large market demand for the metal and mineral products already exists, particularly from regional players, but also within Saudi itself. The kingdom has a healthy reserve of untapped mining potential that can comfortably compensate for the diversification from the oil and gas sector. SIDF lending policy for the mining and sector aims to develop the sector, increase its contribution to non-oil revenue, increase job opportunities, and attract domestic and foreign investment in the kingdom. In its pursuit to support the mining sector, SIDF provides financing to mining projects for all types of minerals with financing of up to 75% of its project cost. The funding has also expanded to include financing advanced exploration activities, which includes drilling and mine preparation activities. Moreover, SIDF will support the added value services and companies linked in sustainable development of the mining industry in all areas of the mining value chain. Saudi Arabia today has witnessed a tremendous change in the new mining legislation, licensing, structuring, and exploration projects made in June of 2020. Also, restructuring of the licensing classification following leading standard and leading global mining hubs, exploitation licensing includes mining, small mining, acquiring, and general purpose. At SIDF, we are excited to work with various exploration and mining companies aligned with the Ministry of Industry and Mineral Resources. SIDF has updated the lending policy for mining sector in April of this year, which includes applications to be considered for advanced exploration activities for the mining projects subject to the provision of a mineral resource report and a pre-feasibility study. Of SIDF support added value services and companies linked to the sustainable development of the mining industry in all areas of mining value chain. We welcome the involvement of international mining and engineering companies which introduce proven technology in local mining operations. And finally, Saudi has an open door investment policy and at SIDF will be more than welcome and delighted to share any more information that can support our clients as their success is our success. Thank you. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mahmoud Al-Asmari, 
from National Industrial Development Center. I would like to thank the entire IMAR team for hosting this premier global resources and mining event, exceptionally virtual this year. I will discuss here the National Industrial Development Center role as a key stakeholder of enabling the mining and industrial opportunities in Saudi Arabia, particularly supporting the targeted new mining investment opportunities to support the envisioned growth. I will start sharing slides on the screen to link you with the discussions. The main theme of this presentation is developing a sustainable and competitive mining and metal industries in KSA. First of all, with the guidance of the Vision 2030, Saudi Arabia is under immense transformation in several areas, creating opportunities, markets, and industries. Of course, leveraging on our competitive advantages, such as rich mineral resources, energy, markets, among others. Industrial Center has been established with ultimate goal of expanding the spectrum of industry in all aspects to meet Vision 2030. The mix of expertise within the center for Saudi industry have the right skills to lead the development targets for the 10 fast growing export oriented industrial sectors in case A with focus on needed enablers and incentives to localize such industries in the country. Today, the center plays a key role in accelerating the activation of the National Industrial Strategy, Comprehensive Mining Strategy, and implementing NEDLIB initiatives. The center is chaired by His Excellency Bandar Al-Khrayev, Minister of Industry and Mineral Resources. I see it drives the industrialization of KSA in collaboration with the key partners. I see is working seamlessly with the various key stakeholders, both public and private sectors, to enable the investment opportunities. There is a journey to cover. However, with our passion, we are confident that we will get there because this is the right time to invest in Saudi. And of course, we will support the investors during the entire investment process. We lead the business development and industrial sector activation end to end. We spearhead innovative industrial concepts. We are the voice of industrial enabling policies and regulations. We are the industrial value chains subject matter expertise in Saudi Arabia. We aspire to become a true think tank powerhouse to support decision makers from both public and private sectors. And finally, we are driving to co-create solutions with the key stakeholders through a collaborative approach. Under localizing targets that was set by National Industrial Strategy and Comprehensive Mining Strategy, 10 industrial sectors has been selected for development by Industrial Center, such as aerospace, automotive, building materials, food processing, minerals and metals, pharmaceuticals and biotech, in addition to renewables. To secure the development of those 10 sectors, a set of enablers are key to foster and accelerate the industrial elements. Enablers have been grouped to five focus areas covering the required elements, including human capital, financial support, industrial infrastructure, strategy and policy formulation, industrial intelligence, 
in addition to governance and partnerships. Industrial Center, along with its strategic partners, is working to develop and expand exploration of resources in the kingdom, mining operations, primary materials industries, and to develop sustainable and global competitive value-added semi-finished and finished industrial materials to develop advanced industries such as automotive, aerospace, shipbuilding, and machinery and equipment. With respect to the aluminium, the availability of competitive primary aluminium products in the kingdom forms a solid foundation for developing high-value aluminium products for local and export markets, including flat products, powder, castings for automotive, aerospace, and other advanced industries. On the other hand, base metals, the large existing demand for local products of copper, such as cable and rods, provide an opportunity for expanding copper mining, developing a copper and zinc smelting and refining, and expanding the existing downstream industries into new products, such as tubes, bars, blades, brass, and others. As for steel, there is a large and growing local demand for many steel products, representing exceptional opportunity for developing iron ore mining and pellets production, and new steel products such as steel blade, automotive sheet, and specialty steels, castings, and forging. Based on the large geological potential for the precious metals, the kingdom aims to expand its production to reach plus 1.6 million ounces by 2035, representing a 10 times increase in the output. As for the silicon, there is plans to localize the solar value chain, including polysilicon production, which would boost silicon metal and quartzite mining demand. With respect to the titanium, the kingdom is one of the largest producers globally of titanium dioxide. In addition, in its uh, new entry uh, into titanium sponge production, a very strategic metal used in several advanced industries such as aerospace, military, desalination, medicals, among others. Going forward, the kingdom aims to maximize the value uh, through the development of melting, milling, and machining, which will support the development of the aviation and military industries. Finally, for the industrial minerals, the kingdom aims to expand capacity, leveraging large silica sand, feldspar, and limestone endowment, and develop zeolites, uh, basalt and specialty silica products such as fused silica, precipitated silica, fumed silica, and silicon carbide. With that, we will be supporting your targets to be implemented in the kingdom. Thank you for your attention.
Good afternoon, everyone. This is Abdul Hamid Al-Shawan from Ministry of Investment. I'm very glad to be here with you all today to give you an overview about Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and also sharing with you um, our Ministry of Investment objective and vision and how we, ca how we can serve um, uh, the foreign investor. So let me start with sharing my presentation with you. So just to start with a brief introduction about Saudi um, at a glance, um, uh, just uh, give you quick figures about the kingdom. Our population is more than 32.5 million. Uh, we have more than 5.7 million Saudis in the market. Our FDI inward stock is more than 231 billion US dollars. And we have very uh, positive growing population rate, is, which is more than 2.5%. Uh, every year, and our um, population is 50% of them are youth, uh, below age of 30 years old. Um, uh, just to give you a, a quick figures about the economy of Saudi Arabia, we are the 18th largest economy in the world, 11th highest growing economy within uh, G20, 27th largest exporter, and 31st largest importer. Our vision 2030 is based on three, pill three pillars. Um, uh, first pillar is to place Saudi Arabia as a heart of Arab and Muslim world and to transform uh, Kingdom Saudi to an investment powerhouse and to be a hub connecting three continents. Also, uh, our vision 2030 covers three themes um, uh, to be a vibrant society, thriving economy, and also to be an ambitious nation. Uh, for each theme, we have developed, you know, um, uh, uh, several KPIs and also different measures to achieve our objective. For example, if we look at the uh, thriving economy th theme objectives, um, and KPIs, we are working to uh, increase women participation in the workforce from 22% to 30%, also to increase the FDI contribution to the GDP from 3.8% to 5.7%, uh, also to increase the private sector contribution to, to the GDP from 40% to 65%, um, uh, increase SME contribution to GDP up to 35% and also to reduce the unemployment rate up to 7%. Our objective in Ministry of Investment is uh, we have five main objectives. Uh, uh, first one is to attract and expand high value investment and to actively market uh, for Invest Saudi brand and also to play a leading role in improving our business environment and to promote and develop customer-centric ecosystem. Uh, we are working on different strategic sectors, including chemicals, ICT, industrial, healthcare, and also mining. Um, uh, and for each sector, we have dedicated team uh, which are working to, uh, you know, uh, support uh, foreign investor to provide him with the uh, right information and to support him uh, in, you know, um, expanding their business in these strategic sectors. And uh, there is several reasons uh, uh, that encourage foreign investors to penetrate the Saudi market. Um, Saudi currently is, wor is working on, you know, a lot of reforms in the country to bring the, the kingdom into a new era. Also, we have very strong integrated infrastructure. A um, uh, young force, as we mentioned in the beginning, is more than 50% of the population. We have very solid and leading financial sector, and we have, you know, a lot of uh, investment opportunities in oil and gas, petrochemicals, and also in the uh, tourism sectors. Uh, I, I can mention, I can mention uh, as an example, uh, a Gidea project, a Red Sea project, and also um, uh, Lama project, and also Deri. business incentive for foreign investor. Um, the foreign investor is, you know, can own 100% of his investment in Saudi. There is no section on that. 
the foreign investor will be able to own um, a real estate. There is no minimum capital required for the license. And um, in Saudi, we have, we have developed more than 25 industrial cities. And we also provide the aftercare and the account management for the investor. Uh, we have a lot of uh, services at MISA to you know, uh, support and advise investors, um, um, such as licensing and government relation. We do provide the, uh, all the investors with legal consultation before even uh, preparing the documentation and also we provide continuous advice on licensing and government re registration also uh, we help investor um, to uh, build uh, his network and uh, to to you know uh, engage him with the local investment in in matchmaking and linkage we support all the investor in location search um, for industrial land and or for you know um, uh, the ideal location for their companies and also also we, we do have international and domestic outreach uh, we always uh, and we, we continue working on improving our business climate by developing policies and recommendation based on investor feedback um, and also we troubleshoot the investor um, uh, problems. We all support and working as advocates for the investor, and and we, and we always we are working in you know building the business case and vis visibility studies uh, for the investment opportunities, and sharing the information with all investors. The registration and obtaining uh, MISA license is very simple. Um, first step is to, you know, register at our website, um, and uh, your request will uh, uh, will take um, uh, maximum uh, two working days to obtain the license. We have several different of licensing um, in Saudi. Um, uh, the service license and we industrial license, commercial license. Uh, also, we do license for the engineering consultancy. Uh, we have, uh, you know, um, uh, announced two years back for inter entrepreneurship uh, license, and also we have uh, specific license for technical and scientific offices. The industrial license covers all the, you know, activities uh, including manufacturing and assemblies, and the license uh, IT and entertainment and also the tourism all falls under the services activities um, uh, we have developed our requirement and uh, reduce it um, uh, to um, uh, two documents to facilitate the registration uh, for the foreign investor. Foreign investor. So, uh, for an investor who would like to and interested to apply at MISA, we only require uh, for two documentation, which is the CR um, and also the audited financial statement. So, when you apply in our website. You will be asked to upload your CR and the uh, your last year financial statement. Uh, after uh, completing the attestation from you know all the authorities in your countries and also uh, by Saudi Embassy. After you apply on our website, um, our team um, at Ministry of Investment will support uh, all the investor in his, his registration journey. So we will walk you through all the process, uh, starting from obtaining Ministry of Investment license until uh, you complete all the registration and, and start your uh, business on the ground. We have five business centers located in different regions in Saudi. Uh, each business center uh, uh, is having, you know, um, uh, a representative from all government entities and the objective of that is to provide um, uh, uh, the full services and registration for the investor so when you come to our business center and visit us our 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 uh, 
uh, government relation employee will support the investor uh, and guide him through uh, all the registration uh, and complete all uh, you know uh, licensing uh, in the same location so it's basically a one-stop one shop uh, to ensure that the investor complete his investment registration journey in one place also we offer an account management services we do have an account management team um, uh, the main function to, for the account management team is to support investor uh, in session and documentation and also provide the correct guidance and advisors um, after obtaining the license and provide continuous support to you know um, uh, pro for problem solving and also to provide the right advice for the business we have uh, various um, uh, communication channel you can reach us uh, anytime uh, through our customer care email and also by um, calling our services uh, phone also you can visit our business center by you know um, uh, um, uh, having appointment with any account manager manager um, uh, in the region and they will provide the full support for all investors thank you very much for your listening and i hope you know um, uh, we'll see you soon on the ground and uh, in our business center. thank you so much Wonder what it's like to fast forward to the future? A future where the heart of the world connects old global trade routes with new global cities, where we fuel innovation to generate tomorrow's energy, where we disrupt old sectors to grow new ones, all while unleashing the potential of untapped opportunities, where reform is the norm and where doing business gets easier and better by the day, even by the hour where the young are empowered to compete like never before. And where Saudi Arabia is open to the world and for the world. We don't just look forward to the future. We're seizing it. Future Forward. Invest Saudi.